All right. I would like to talk about two important concepts in adaptive control design. They are called reference point and reference model. And <clears throat> I would like to, again, uh, while I introduce preliminary conce concepts, I would like to focus on the scalar system subject to this uncertainty. We have a lot to cover. However, we need to establish these concepts at the basic level so that you will crystal clear understand them. All right. Uh, first, um, as you remember from previous videos, W is unknown. And I am going to do adaptive control, so there are no assumptions on W. First, I would like to do a reference point-based design. I would like to define uh, what do we mean by reference point. Reference point C is the desired value of X infinity. Basically, as X, you know, approaches to X T, this is the point that we want x to converge. You can call it convergence point. We want state x to converge to command c or reference c. I am going to assume c is constant. c can be, of course, time varying. Um, again, we are introducing basic concepts first, so I don't want to add additional complexity. I would like to assume c to be constant. All right, so in when we design adaptive control, <coughs> Um, we want x to converge to this, com to this command c in the presence of uncertainty. So, from a dynamical st uh, system standpoint, we would like to minimize the difference between the state x and c. For this purpose, to capture this difference, I am defining the error signal, basically x minus c. If error go goes to zero by proper adaptation and control law, then we achieve our objective. Right. If error going to zero, then x becomes c. Um, the steady state value. All right. Um, I would like to establish a dynamics for the error. So I am computing e dot e dot is x dot minus c dot c dot is zero. So e dot becomes x dot. I am writing x dot, which is w x plus u. So. Um, I forgot to mention, but reference point and reference model, these two concept, concepts becomes very important for the case of command following problem. That's why we have the command C or the reference point, unlike our previous videos that I was considering stabilization problem X to going to zero. All right, so we are basically, we want this command following problem X to converge to this reference point or command C. Um, for this, I define now for the command following problem, which is slightly different than the stabilization problem, I have two control signals. This is called the nominal control signal. This is called the adaptive control signal. Nominal control signal is the signal that does its job well in the absence of system uncertainties, meaning that um, if you basically remove the uncertainty here and put this UN as the actual um, con actual only control signal, then you have e dot equals to minus uh, e dot sorry e dot equals to u n, which is minus alpha x minus c, and x minus c is minus alpha e. Then this will result error to go to zero from any initial condition of the error. So that's why we call this the nominal control signal. Sometimes it is also called as the baseline control signal. It does its job in the absence of uncertainties. So control signal has two terms. One of is this nominal control signal. The second one is the adaptation. And the purpose of adaptation is to cancel the effect of WX so that nominal control signal can do its job in the presence of system uncertainties. And Similar to previous video, a W hat is the estimation of the unknown weight W. So this is the adaptive control signal. Now for this uh, video, I am not giving the structure of the parameter update law. We are going to derive this together from the Lipunov stability analysis. I am just going to put gamma, which is the learning rate, multiplied by function to be determined using the Lipunov stability analysis. This is the parameter update law. Now, I am going to insert u or u 
un plus ua to this e dot equation. If I do so, e dot equals to basically wx minus these two terms. The first term is coming from the nominal control signal with this error notation definition and the second is here. Now I am doing some grouping. I am writing this term first and I am going to group these two terms like this. And if I define W tilde, the parameter estimation error to be W hat minus W, then I arrive this uh, E dot dynamics minus alpha E minus W tilde X. All right. So this is the error dynamics. This is the parameter uh, update law. I am considering Lyapunov function candidate, positive definite given here. This is very similar to previous video. I just, in the previous video for the stabilization problem, I was using x, but right now I don't want to drive x to zero. I want to drive e to zero, which is x minus c. This is the reference point of interest. I am calculating v dot, e, e dot, uh, plus 1 over alpha w tilde w tilde dot. Note that w tilde dot is nothing but w hat dot minus w dot, but w dot is zero. Constant error. Of course, uh, constant weight, constant unknown weight. Of course, it can be time varying. Once again, this is, a, uh, this is of consider, is a, we are going to consider this in the following series. I would like to focus on the basics. Now I am inserting e dot here, which is this execution, and um, w hat dot, which is this execution. This term and this term cancels out with each other. Now we end up having from this term, we have this. So we end up having this term and this term. So now we want this cross, we basically this term to be zero, right? I would like to have this nice uh, negative term, alpha being positive. So to cancel the effect of these terms, we should choose the weight uh, parameter uh, update law according to this or this. Gamma is a positive learning rate, Xe. If you choose it like this, then these terms will cancel out. So we end up having V that equals to minus alpha E. Um, now we can conclude that since we don't have, we started with two terms, but we only have one term here, we don't know what W tilde doing. So from the resorting to Lyapunov stability theory, we, the best we can say is the pair E and W tilde, they are Lyapunov stable or in, a, in an engineering sense, they are bonded. They are not diverging to infinity, they remain bonded. Now, um, once again, we talked about Barbalas Lemma in the previous video. Um, we would like to apply Barbalas Lemma. So for this purpose, let's compute V dot dot. Because we know that if V dot dot is bonded, then V dot going to zero, ST goes to infinity. V dot dot is alpha to E, E dot. So this is the alpha to E term, E dot here. Now, from this Lyapunov stability, we know error is bonded, error is bonded, W tilde is bonded. We have X, Lyapunov stability doesn't say anything about X, but if you think a little bit, X is nothing, let's first of all, error was X minus C, so this implies that X is E plus C, this is constant, this is bonded by the Lyapunov stability, and hence X must be bonded since the right hand side is bonded. So this is also bonded. Everything here on the right hand side is bonded, so V dot dot is bonded. So from Barbalat's lemma, V dot becomes zero as T goes to infinity. Observing the structure of V dot, if this goes to zero, this side also goes to zero, so error going to zero. Um, so this was the case for the uh, reference point design, error going to zero. Everything stays normal and, um, and as expected with some changes. Uh, Lyapunov function changed a little bit for the stabilization uh, for the command following problem and we had this nominal control for the um, 
um, for the uh, command following problem as compared to the stabilization problem considered in the previous video. Um, now, all right, so this was a, you know, we wanted to drive X to C, so we did a reference point based of a design. Now, let's do a reference model based of a design, not like reference point. All right, so once again, similar to how I defined reference point, I need to define the reference model. Reference model is nothing but it captures ideal closed loop performance. Ideal means, ideal performance is the performance that we achieve with the nominal control in the absence of uncertainties. I'm going to talk about it in a second. And note that it is not a point, but it is a trajectory. And I am going to illustrate this in, in, uh, in two ways, one mathematically, one graphically in a second. So first of all, let's consider this uncertain system subject to this control law. In order to determine the structure of the reference model, we need to neglect for a second the presence of uncertainties. All right, we don't have any uncertainty in the system. So this term goes. Now, if you don't need, if you don't have uncertainty, this means that, well, you don't need adaptive control as well. So adaptation goes as well. So we capture the ideal close the performance when there is no uncertainty and hence you don't need an adaptation. So when, when you plug this control signal to the system, you have x that equals to un and un, as you remember, was minus alpha x minus c. It didn't change. It is the ideal nominal, it's basically it is the baseline. It is the nominal control design. Um, that is performed when there is no uncertainty, that is designed when there is no uncertainty. So this x that equals to minus alpha x mi minus c is the ideal closed-up system performance. Well, motivated from this standpoint, we choose the reference model as this. Here, as you um, look, we just changed x with xr and XR is the state of the reference model. R here stands for the reference. And it has some initial condition. Generally speaking, um, if you know your state, you should initialize it as X0. Of course, there may be some unknown terms in the initialization due to measurement noise, so on and so forth. Um, but it is possible to select XRO close to XO, the uh, state of the system. All right, for reference model-based adaptive control, our aim is slightly different, that, different than what I just covered. For, the, for this purpose, now our new aim is to minimize the difference between X and XR. We are not minimizing the difference between X and C x and xr and xr is a trajectory that is generated by this reference model it is not a point it is a trajectory so therefore we need a new error signal so i am going to use the notation the same notation e but you need to be careful now e denotes x minus xr not x minus c so I am doing some abuse of notation, but um, this is 99% uh, of the time what is done in many textbooks or many um, available uh, Department of Defense reports or technical papers, so on and so forth. Now, with this error signal, I would like to find E dot. E dot is X dot minus X R dot. X dot is here. X R dot is here. Um, in here, I would like to now play with the terms. This is the same equation x dot minus xr dot uh, that you see at the end of the previous slide. Um, I am inserting un here, ua here, and I am expanding all the terms. These two terms will cancel out with each other. Now I am grouping these terms like this and these terms like this. So I end up having the same error signal um, that is, I would like to go here, 
we have the same error signal that is uh, captured in this for the reference point based design. But of course, this error signal error was x minus c. The near error signal error is x minus xr. They result in the same dyna dynamics, but their definition are different. But since they result in the same dynamics, basically the same Lyapunov analysis that we just performed holds identical with no changes. So this is our parameter update low subject to positive learning rate. All right, I would like to summarize the punchline here um, for reference point based of a design and reference model design. And in order to prevent any confusion, confusion I am directly writing um, weight update loads or parameter update loads like x minus c instead of using error. And here for the second one, we are using x minus xr. Nominal controllers are the same. Adaptive controllers are the same. This reference model based design also requires computation of this reference model given here because it will be used on the parameter update load. However, in a reference point design, we have just the comment. <clears throat> Based on my personal experience, now I would like to illustrate um, which one should I prefer in applications of adaptive control theory. Again, I mentioned this in the first video. The main intention of this lecture series, I want you to well understand every aspect about adaptive control that is not covered in um, textbooks. All right, so in reference point based design, we are trying to minimize the error x minus c and it drives the parameter update low. It basically, it is important for learning w hat, which is based on this ordinary differential equation parameter update low. Now, for example, let's say you are starting from this initial condition and your command is here, then this error can be initially large. So reference point based adaptation can have larger error signals initially, like you see in here. And this can cause oscillations in the system performance. And you know from your undergraduate control design or any graduate control design, we don't like oscillations, right? You don't want passengers to oscillate and get motion sick in an airplane. However, in the reference model based design, this error, you train, you train the parameter update low based on a much smoother, much smaller error as compared to a reference point design. So you can, you know, select X R zero as X zero, but let's say you have some offset due to some measurement noise or some um, initial error mismatch. Basically, reference model-based adaptation can result in smoother transients that is more desirable in practice. So, <clears throat> in my personal academic and uh, experimental journey, when I um, apply adaptive control to real-world systems, I prefer a reference model-based design. And I always saw the ben its benefit um, in applications. I would like to end this video um, because in the rest of the lectures, I am going to focus on model-based adaptive control design, uh, sorry, reference model-based adaptive control design. And those designs are called model reference adaptive, adaptive control or shortly MRAC which is the most uh, popular adaptive control method, method in industry in applications of adaptive control theory. All right, thanks.